Hello everyone, welcome back to Close to Be Milkshake. I am your host along with support puppet, Mr. Chicken. Yes. Yeah, okay. So today I'm wearing the raspberry hat. Uh, haven't worn this in a long time, so I thought I would grace it, you know, in my video when we talk about comorbidity in personality disorders. I am gonna go through antisocial, borderline, narcissist, and histrionic and show you from the DSM-5 how they cross over, okay, into other um, personality disorders and the differences from each one, all right? Because a lot of people get confused. Not that it really matters to you because usually you're like, my my mother or father or my partner is a mother suck and you are just upset about that and you just want your feelings validated so this is really just for the people that you know really do like digging deep into what is um personality disorders and how they you know milkshake right okay so first let's start with antisocial personality disorder. Other personality disorders may be confused with antisocial personality disorder because they have certain features in common. It is therefore important to distinguish among these disorders based on differences in characteristic features. However, if an individual has personality features that meet criteria for one or more personality disorders in addition to antisocial personality disorder, all of them can be diagnosed, okay? This is why you won't just see somebody diagnosed with one thing. Now, some, some people are diagnosed with, you know, say, um, borderline personality disorder and PTSD, um, depression and anxiety, right? I mean, it's almost like, you know, everybody's their own little milkshake, right? So sometimes when, um, you're watching a video on something, maybe something doesn't match up 100% with what you went through with somebody or even yourself. So like if even if I'm talking about borderline personality disorder, about the couple of people that have been very close in my life, that doesn't mean that that's, um, you know, your experience. Okay? Okay. So don't get defensive and shit on my chest. All right. Individuals with anti -personality, antisocial personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder share a tendency to be tough-minded, glib, superficial, exploitative, and lack empathy, okay? So both those disorders have that in common. However, narcissistic personality disorder does not include characteristics of impulsivity, aggression and deceit okay so somebody who is deceitful they are not narcissist that's not part of the narcissistic criteria all right but they can have antisocial traits it really is um interesting when you look into the pasts of your people or yourself you know if you're trying to figure out who the fuck you are and just looking like did i have um conduct disorder as a child you know, and when you look into that, because that's usually um, the base to have antisocial personality disorder as you grow with up it. All right. Let's continue. In addition, a Individuals with antisocial personality disorder may not be as needy of the admiration and envy of others, and persons with narcissistic personality disorder usually lack the history of conduct disorder in childhood or criminal behavior in adulthood. See, so um, it doesn't mean like, they're a narcissist because, you know, they're doing all this antisocial shit. No, that's the thing is, you know, you got this um, 
a person wearing a mask who has to be better than everybody else and very selfish and everything and needs to be admired and then you know their vulnerable side where if they don't get that admiration they fall into a fucking pile of shit but you get the um you know the aggression and deceitfulness and impulsivity um, of somebody with antisocial personality disorder, but then there's also anti, uh, you'll you'll see that there's um, impulsivity also with um, borderlines as well. Isn't this fun? Milkshake time. Okay, individuals with antisocial personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder share a tendency to be impulsive. Hey, histrionics too. Superficial. Excitement seeking, reckless, seductive, and manipulative. But persons with histrionic personality disorder tend to be more exaggerated in their emotions and do not characteristically engage in any antisocial behaviors. So you can see, um, like Amber Heard on the stand, how she's like, oh my. And looking at the fucking tree, like, are you buying this shit? You know, but then um, her very abusive um, uh, and and deceitfulness and making up shit and bruises on the face, <laughs> pretending like she has you know a bloody nose by putting a nail polish on a tissue and everything. Those are antisocial traits. You see, it's not. Um, that's not narcissism, okay? Okay, okay. <sighs> Where are we? Individuals with histrionic and borderline personality disorder are manipulative to gain nurturance, whereas those with antisocial personality disorder are manipulative to gain profit, power, or some other material gratification. Okay, individuals with antisocial personality disorder tend to be less emotionally unstable and more aggressive than those with borderline personality disorder. So the borderlines, you know, they have their mood swings up and down, up and down, um, or just big strong emotions. And somebody with antisocial personality disorder does not. They're more flat. Okay, um, that's why um, also antisocials can have borderline personality disorder too. If they have those explosive moments, all right. I know this is fun shit, right? <laughs> okay. Um, although antisocial personality disorder may be present in some individuals with paranoid personality disorder, it is not usually motivated by the desire for personal gain or to exploit others as an antisocial personality disorder, but rather in more of an attribute to a desire for revenge. Okay, but you know, paranoids can also be comorbid with antisocial personality disorder. So, um, I mean, I love this shit, y'all. You know, digging into it, trying to figure out, I mean, I'm always psychological, analyzing everyone i can't fucking help it i've done this my whole life it's probably something that annoyed the shit out of my ex <laughs> sorry not sorry all right let's go on to borderline personality disorder so other personality disorders may be confused with borderline personality disorder because they have certain features in common. It is therefore important to distinguish among the disorders, and yes, they can be comorbid, as they're going to say. Although, histrionic personality dis... I mean, I'm sorry, not comorbid. Um, you can be diagnosed as several. They, they say this throughout the DSM on everything that I'm going to read at the beginning. Okay. Although histrionic personality disorder can be characterized by attention-seeking, manipulative behavior, and rapidly shifting emotions, borderline personality disorder is distinguished by self-destructiveness, angry disruptions in close relationships, and chronic feelings of deep emptiness and loneliness. 
Paranoid ideas or illusions may be present in both personality, both borderline personality disorder and schizotypal personality disorder, but these symptoms are more transient, interpersonal, reactive, and responsive to external structuring in borderline personality disorder. Okay, as you guys know, when I start reading too much, sometimes my brain turns into mashed potatoes. Hopefully, I will not stutter. Okay. Although paranoid personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder may also be characterized by an angry reaction to minor stimuli, the reactive stability of self-image as well as the react relative, excuse me, lack of self-directiveness, impulsivity, and abandonment concern distinguishes these disorders from borderline personality disorder. So there's a lot of um, fear of abandonment involved with borderline personality disorder where, um, see, this is why I say um, I'm not somebody who gets jealous all the time. Um, I feel that I'm number one. There's no way that you would leave me for somebody else. Um, and in the past, if somebody, if I knew that a partner was fucking around or whatever, um, I either did not care because I'm getting something from them, um, whether it, it's usually, you know, um, money, um, or um, if, you know, I'm done, like, I don't have anybody to play with, then I'll come and attack you, belittle you, and shame you, and threaten you for cheating on me, okay? I always feel like I'm in control. So, um, you know, if, if I feel like I'm letting you, if, if there's a boundary that you won't let me cross, I'm letting you get away with that. Does that make sense? Okay, um, I know it's crazy the way my brain works, but this is um, a protection thing. This protects me from uh, destroying every single person that comes into my life, you know? I have to live in some sort of fantasy land where I'm the queen of, you know, my whole land, you know? And I allow control and have power over all of my people. Okay. Although antisocial personality disorder and borderline personality disorder are both characterized by manipulative behavior, individuals with antisocial personality disorder are manipulative to gain profit, power, or some material gratification, whereas the goal of borderline personality disorder is directed more towards gaining the concern of caregivers. And this is why, and I'm not saying all borderlines, but this is why you will see borderlines um, threaten unalivement, you know, um, or even, you know, I've had, and I don't know if this is borderline shit or if it's mixed with antisocial shit, but because of the frayed, the frayed, being afraid of being abandoned, I was threatened and blackmailed. By a borderline um, even my mom thank you okay both dependent personality disorder and borderline personality disorder are characterized by fear of abandonment however the individual both borderline personality disorder reacts to abandonment with feelings of emotional emptiness rage and demands hey there you go demands uh, that's the threat and the blackmail <laughs> whereas the inv individual with dependent personality disorder reacts with increasing appeasement and submissiveness and urgently seeking a replacement relationship to provide caregiving and support. This is almost something that somebody with codependency would do. You guys, the DSM-5 is free online. If you ever feel um, that this makes sense to you, um, just look it over and see if you have you know, these sorts of traits, okay? And it is, you know, uh, I believe, um, a, a fixable. Borderline personality disorder can further be distinguished from dependent personality disorder by the typical pattern of unstable and intense relationships. Okay, 
And remember, these things can be comorbid, so they can be mixed up together, right? So you can be borderline and dependent, all right? Now let's go down to hysteronic, really quick, all right? Other personality disorders may be confused with hysteronic personality disorder because they have certain features in common. Okay, although borderline personality disorder can also be characterized by attention seeking, manipulative behavior and rapid shifting emotions, it is distinguished by self-destructiveness, angry disruptions in close relationships and chronic feelings of deep emptiness and identity disturbance. Individuals with antisocial personality disorder and hysteronic personality disorder share the tendency of uh, impulsive, superficial, excitement-seeking, reckless, seductive, and manipulativeness. But persons with hysteronic personality disorder tend to be more exaggerated in their emotions and do not characteristically engage in antisocial personality disorder. Individuals with hysteronic personality disorder are manipulative to gain nurturance, whereas those with antisocial manipulate to gain profit, power, and some other material gratification. Okay. Although individuals with NPD also crave attention from others, they usually want praise for their superiority Whereas individuals with hysteronic personality disorder are willing to be viewed as fragile or dependent if this is instrumental in getting attention. So the damsel in distress, or you'll see dudes do this shit too, so they can have, you know, the mommy caregiver take care of them. I Individuals with NPD may exaggerate the intimacy of their relationships with other people, but they are more apt to empathize the VIP, empathize, emphasize, emphasize the VIP, very important person status or wealth of their friends. In dependent personality disorder, the individual is excessively dependent on others for praise and guidance, but without the flamboyant, exaggerated emotional features of individuals of HPD. All right, let's finish off with our beautiful, beautiful narcissist. Yay. Yay. Okay. Where am I? Where am I? I'm getting confused. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. How many minutes I got? Okay. Let's see. Sorry, y'all. Sort of. Let's see. Okay. Here we go. Other personality disorders may be confused with MPD. Mm hmm but you can be multiply diagnosed. All right, let's go. The most useful feature in discriminating narcissistic personality disorder from hysteronic, antisocial, and BPD, in which the interactive styles are croquettish, callous, and needy, respectively in the grandiosity characteristic of NPD. The relative stability of self-image as well as the relative lack of self-destructiveness, impulsivity, and abandonment concerns also help distinguish NPD from BPD, okay? So that is the big difference. But as you see, narcissists can also be comorbid with borderline personality disorder as well, okay? If you see, um, you know, that's one of the big things that um, I pay attention to is the abandonment thing. Uh, you know, the angry friend that gets upset if you don't text back right away, um, shit like that. <laughs> um, uh, uh, the, 
I don't want to talk shit. Okay. Uh, extensive pride in achievements, a relative lack of emotional display, and disdain for other sensitivities help distinguish NPD from hysteronic personality disorder. Okay. Disdain for other sensitivities. See, I'm telling you, this is part of what goes on. This is part of what goes on, you know. Um, we see um, that as a weakness, and it all has to do of, you know, us in childhood. A narcissist is never going to be weak again. And so they ingrained in their mind that seeing that outside of them, they're going to almost like um, punish their own inner child. That's how it feels like for me, okay? Although individuals with borderline hysteronic and MPD may require much attention, those with NPD um, specifically need that attention to be admiring. Individuals with antisocial and narcissistic personality disorder share a tendency to be tough-minded, glib, superficial, exploitative, and unempathetic. However, MPD does not necessarily include the characteristics of impulsivity, aggression, and deceit. An individual, no, in addition, individuals with ASPD may not be as needy for admiration, envy of others, and persons as, and persons with MPD usually lack the history of conduct disorder in childhood or criminal behavior in adult Hood. Okay. Where the fuck am I? In both NPD and obsessive compulsive personality disorder, the individual may profess a committed a commitment to perfectionism and believe that others cannot do things well. Yes. I do this too, um, but with my ADHD, um, I fuck up anyway. So that messes with my head as well because I want everything to be perfect, but I am forgetful, you know, spacey. Um, I think that I do things that I don't. Um, I'm not paying attention to you. So in your eyes, I'm not perfect. And this is going to get us fighting, right? Okay, don't criticize me. <laughs> in contrast to the accompanying Self-criticism of those with obsessive compulsive personality disorder, individuals with NPD are more likely to believe that they have achieved perfection. Yes, and this is why um, when I fall into a vulnerable collapse state, when I realize that I'm not, okay? In the DSM, they leave out the vulnerable characteristics of narcissistic personality disorder that um, they do add in in um, some alternative um, bullshit. Is it the IP some shit? I don't know. If you guys know, let me know so the class knows, okay? Suspiciousness and social withdrawal usually distinguish those with schizotypal or paranoid personality disorder from those with NPD. When these qualities are present in an individual with narcissistic personality disorder, they derive primarily from fears of having imperfections or flaws revealed. Yes. So, you know, after breaking up with my past person and me thinking I was perfect, and then I'm having this huge um, shame spiral, I isolate myself um, because of that shit. Okay. Many highly successful individuals display personality traits. They may be considered narcissistic only when these traits are inflexible. Okay. They're, they just, they're happening all the time throughout their whole fucking life. All right. Maladaptive and persisting and cause significant functional impairment or subjective distress, do they constant, constitute a personality disorder, okay? So it's not a disorder unless 
It's fucking plaguing their whole life. And with, with all this mixed in, you also have um, shit like anxiety, depression, you know, um, um, and then the motherfucking personality disorders that I have not spoken about um, in cluster A and cluster C. I really like paranoid personality disorder because it does look like um, NPT, but whatever. Um, I already made a video on that. So I hope that this was at least interesting and um, the DSM-5 is free online. I do believe that they keep coming up with new disorders. Um, the pharmaceutical companies do pay for the people who create the DSM, uh, you know, to put new shit in so they can come up with new meds and make more money off of our mental health issues, okay? So that's why when I say when you look up dependent a personality disorder and it sounds a lot about you know codependency they're gonna be like oh you're dependent here let's give you this new med you know so anyway believe me I know that I also don't trust anyone and I just tell you the things that um, I do resonate with and the things that I do are Narcissistic personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, looking up the motherfucking paranoid shit. I got some shit going on. I do have social anxiety, dude. Um, I don't think I suffer from depression. I have my sad moments and vulnerable moments, but I don't get stuck there, if that makes sense. But we'll wait for the doctor to tell me what my milkshake is. Okay, okay. So I hope that was helpful. Have a great day. Namaste.